The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. I found this sheet of paper with typewriting all over it. What does it say? Well, it's funny. Just the same thing over and over. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Well? Is that a code of some kind? No, that's what beginners write for practice. Well, why don't they write something that makes sense? Like what? Ha! <laughs> like Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight... Murder in black and white. morning, a wooded glen in a vast city park, and on the still frost-hardened ground there lies a dead man. Detectives move methodically about the body. Beside it kneels a police surgeon. Watching him is Captain Logan of the Homicide Bureau, Ann Williams' reporter, and the man with the press camera is Casey. Aren't you almost finished, Casey? Yeah, Annie. Thanks for letting me take these shots of the deceased, Logan. I'll do you a favor someday, too. You can do me a favor right now, Casey. You too, Miss Williams. Go back to your paper and let us cops get our work done. Say, Doc, can you tell yet how long ago this guy died? About uh, 2 o'clock this morning, Captain. The bullet that killed him was fired at close range, still lodged in the skull. My guess is that it's a 32. The slug couldn't have been given to a more deserving guy. What do you mean, Casey? You know who this stiff is, don't you? Well, he has no identification on him. You should know him, though. He almost became middleweight champ a few years ago, yeah. fighting under the name of Tug Loftus. Say, you're right. I make him now. Yeah. A moment ago, Annie, this lug told us to go peddle our paper. Oh, mm-hmm. nuts. Hey, this Tug Loftus was a troublemaker, wasn't he? Always getting into jam. Yeah, he was an all-around heel. Tug Loftus' idea of a good time was to pick barroom fights with guys who didn't recognize him and then beat him to a pulp. Which means he had quite a few enemies. Yeah, that makes things just dandy. Well, that implies you haven't found any leads to the killer, Captain. Not a one, Miss Williams, except this book of matches. Book of matches? That was in his pocket. Hmm. Got an ad on it for the Briarwald Casino. And only two matches torn out of it, which may indicate that the Briarwald was the last place he was in before he came here and was bumped off. Where's the Briarwald? Well, that's a roadhouse out on Old Turnpike, run by Jake Salwood and his cousin Lou, Annie. Who do quite a little bookmaking in connection with their cafe business. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we met the Salwins last year, Ann, remember? We got a report that the safe in their joint had been robbed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they denied the report. To the cops, as well as to us. They said no one had touched their safe. Yeah, Lieutenant Schwartz of the robbery squad told me about that. He figured the two Salwins denied the robbery because the safe had contained a lot of horse betters, though they couldn't explain as cafe income. Yeah, their Briarwald Casino is just the kind of a joint Tug Loftus would patronize. Say, when are you going out there, Logan? Right away. There's nothing more I can do here. You're going to have company, pal. Annie, let's go. <laughs> Hey, Walter, fix Mr. Snodgrass one of his specials. You know, with the little piece of pineapple in it? <laughs> oh, dear, that guy. Uh, tell me, Casey, what did you and Miss Williams find out at the Briarwall Casino? Nothing, Ethelbert, nothing. Except that Tug Loftus was in the joint only a few hours before he was killed. Well, nobody there remembers him leaving with anyone who might have taken him to Lake Sark Park and, and shot him. I wouldn't believe anything Big Jake Salwin said or his cousin Lou. And neither would Captain Logan. He questioned everyone who works in the place. They all agreed Loftus left there alone? Yeah, they just don't remember. Well, had he picked any fights there before he left? Nobody had on other nights. Hmm. 
Since that matchbook was the only clue, it don't sound like this murder will be easy to solve. Uh, how about that bullet that killed the guy? Doesn't match up with any gun that ballistics has on record. Well, we better get back to the office, Casey. Yeah, the city desk will be paging us if we don't. Uh-oh, that may be them now. I'll see. Blue Note Cafe, Ethelbert, the bartender speaker. Yeah, Casey's right here. Uh, I knew it. It ain't your city desk, Casey. It's one of the photographers in your department. That fella, Shapiro. Shapiro. Oh, yeah, give me it. Shapiro. Hello, Shap. Who? No, I don't know any Mrs. McCluskey. What? Oh, yeah, 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 I remember her now. A couple of years ago, she was a witness in a hit-and-run case. Yeah? All right, tell her to wait. I'll be right over. Thank you, Shep. So long. What is it, Casey? Old gal I met in a hit-and-run killing says she has something hot for me. Oh, you mean a tip? Yeah, it's probably about something unimportant, but come on, Annie, we'll see. I've got evidence of a murder, Mr. Casey. A murder, Mrs. McCluskey? In black and white. Oh, well, that sounds very interesting. Tell me what you got. First, Mr. Casey, what do I get? What, you you mean the... Since I described that hit-and-run automobile to the cops a couple of years ago and got nothing for it, I found out that newspapers pay for what they call scoops. You was nice to me, Mr. Casey, so I'm giving you and your paper first chance. How much? Well, it all depends on what you have to offer. You interested in catching the murderer of that prize fighter, Tug Loftus? Tug Loftus. I got a picture of the killing, miss. What a picture? Casey. Is it worth $100 to your paper? Well, I'll say... Uh, <clears throat> well, City Desk sets the price for exclusive tips, Mrs. McCluskey, but uh, I'll guarantee you 100 bucks if you've got what you say you have. I've got it. Well, let's see. I get the 100 You get the 100 if. All right. This here envelope was in my mailbox this morning, so naturally I opened it. Later, when I put my glasses on, I seen the address is mine, but the name ain't mine. It's addressed to Mr. Max Treaty. Treaty, 121 3rd Street. 121 3rd Street is where I live, but no Max Treaty lives there. Well, well, go on. Well, inside the envelope was just this here camera snapshot. Nothing else. Annie, look. Yeah, it's Loftus. As we saw him lying in that park. I knew that from the picture you had of him in yesterday's paper. Standing over Loftus is a guy with a gun in his hand. And he's just killed the fighter. That's the way it looks. That's a good profile shot of the killer, Ann. The face is clear even in this small print, and when I blow it up... It's worth a hundred, ain't it, Mr. Casey? It's Casey's? worth a hundred, Mrs. McCluskey. I said I had evidence in black and white. Now, who do you suppose took that picture, Casey? And why? That's something we'll think about later. But I'll bet it was taken with an infrared flash bulb. A black light? Yep. The guy with the gun didn't see any flash. He didn't know that somebody was taking this picture. We've got to find this skinny, long-nosed guy with a gun, you know it? Well, the cops will do that when we show them this. Sure, yes, and probably crab our exclusive. Before the cops learn anything about this, Annie, we're going to try to find him. How? Well, the picture, the, the guy this picture was addressed to ought to give us a hint. Well, Casey, he may be the killer. This picture may have been addressed to him as the first step in a uh, blackmail scheme. Now, Annie, you're cooking on all burners. Let me see that envelope again. Yeah. Addressed to Max Treaty, 121 3rd Street. And the sender had the wrong address because Mrs. McCluskey lives there. And I live alone. Well, I'll look in the phone book. Yeah, do that, do that. Uh, you, You said you got this in the morning mail, Mrs. McCluskey? That's right. I wanted time to do some thinking. Yeah, about whether to put the B on us for that... Hundred dollars, huh? You said yourself it's worth it. Oh, I'm not reneging on that. I've heard of one thousand dollars rewards being offered for murderers, but in order to get it, you had to capture them yourself. Yeah, that that makes a difference. So I figured. Hey, Casey, Max Treaty is in the phone book. Well, let me see it. Yeah, he lives on Third Street, all right. See, but his address is given here as seven two seven. Yeah, yeah, it looks like one two one on this envelope because this guy writes sevens that look like ones. Yeah. That's something else for us to think about later, Annie. Well, let's call on Max Tree. Right now, Ann. When do I get my hundred? There'll be a check in the mail for you tomorrow morning, Mrs. McCluskey, for two hundred. Two hundred? Yep, and thanks, and so long. Two hundred dollars. <gasps> Drat it. I bet I should have asked for more. <laughs> Max 
back street, he lives in a pretty good-looking apartment house, Casey. Yeah, he must be in the dough. Let's go in, Annie. Glass doors, no? <laughs> it's a funny neighborhood. Only a few blocks away where Mrs. McCluskey lives. There's nothing but tenements and little old one-family houses. Oh, there's the here. elevator. The operator may be able to give us a line on this guy. We're looking for Mr. Max Treaty. Uh, he's a top floor, apartment 12F. Yeah, take us up, will you, please? Okay. But he uh, may not be in. I haven't seen him this evening. Uh, we'll take a chance. Uh, we're not sure this Mr. Treaty is the one we're looking for. Can you tell us what business he's in? I don't think he's in any business, mister. Oh, you mean he has an income and doesn't have to work? But I uh, really don't know. I, I'm not the kind who prize into the personal affairs of tenants. Oh, that's right. You don't look that type. How long has he lived here? Oh, about uh, eight or nine months. Took a sublease on a furnished apartment. Uh, does that tell you if he's the man you're looking for? Well, not quite, no. Is he a skinny guy, about uh, 35 with a long nose? That's Mr. Treaty. Yeah, we can come to the right place, then. Well, here's the top floor. Apartment 12F is the last door to your right. Thank you, pal. Well, you're quite welcome. Casey, the man in that picture is skinny and has a long nose. Yeah, the elevator guy says that description fits Treaty. All right, here's 12F. I'll buzz the bell. If he's the killer, he'll be dangerous. What do we You do? have no reason to think we're on to it. Nobody answers the bell. The elevator man said he hadn't seen him this evening. I don't hear any sound from inside. I'll try the bell again. Ah, Casey! Huh? Look there, under the door. Holy... It looks like blood. It is blood. It seeped through from the other side. I'm getting into that apartment. Okay. Door's locked. This little strip of celluloid we burglars always carry. You can slip it? I think so. This is only a spring latch. There. All right, come in. Casey, there on the floor. I know, I see. Let me close this door. I don't want any visitors here. No. It's the man in that picture, Treaty. Yeah. He's been beaten on the head. Uh, is He's it... been dead for a couple of hours, I think. Body's almost cold, and this pool of blood is dry around the edges. His clothes have been searched. And the apartment. I'll say. He and this joint have been practically ripped apart. Oh, isn't this just swell? We came here hoping to crack one murder, and now we've got another. Yes. There's no black and white evidence to show who pulled this one. But I tell you, you can't say that. It's a secret. Look, secret or not, I'm going to tell it even if I get fired. But look, uh... look... Now, look, look. Some secrets are too good to keep, and besides... Hey, we're on the air now. Okay, here goes. Friends, I've just had a sneak preview of the brand new Ivory Fire King oven glass. It's terrific. For the very first time in history, they've produced oven glass that's beautiful, rich, warm ivory in color through and through. And it's even guaranteed against oven breakage for two long years. You've never seen such beautifully designed oven glass before. Classic lines, simple, dignified, as beautiful as any table china you could wish for. And rich, lovely, opaque ivory in color. Ah, you've done it. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> well, I'll uh, have to add that lovely new Ivory Fire King oven glass isn't on sale everywhere as yet. But it will be soon, and it's worth watching and waiting for. Oh. Well, uh, haven't you something else to say? Oh, yes, yes. Friends, beautiful new Ivory Fire King oven glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. <laughs> The most famous name in glass. We've got to call the cops, Casey. Take it easy, take it easy. We'll have a look around first. You've already looked around. The murderer isn't hiding here waiting. No, he probably made his getaway right after he socked this guy for the last time. Friend Treaty took quite a beating before he was finally knocked off. How can you tell that? Look at the black and blue marks on him. The guy's got to be alive to bruise. Mm -hmm. Marks around his wrists and ankles. It's been tied up quite a while. Yeah, I see. Apparently, the killer tried to make him tell where something was hidden. He wouldn't or couldn't tell, so the killer searched him. <laughs> and how he searched. All the stuffing's been pulled out of the chairs and the mattress has been ripped open. Treaty's clothes got it going over, too. Lining's cut, the soles of his show, shoes all split. Hey, this must be the stuff that was taken out of him and examined. Look at that wallet, 
fountain pen, cigarette case, revolver. Now, don't touch anything, Casey. Just Who's call. touching anything? I'm only to look. Yeah, it's a revolver. It looks like the gun in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a 38, eh? Loftus was shot with a 32. Well, then, Treaty must have used another gun for the have. killer? Probably threw it in the lake afterward. Say. What have you picked up? Look at that. A book of matches from the Briarwald Casino. Well, like the one found on Tug Loftus. Yes. This was half hidden under the sofa. Well, that connects the two murders. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, Casey, we've got to get the cops here. Not just cops. We're getting Logan. I want him to get first break on what we know about that picture. And the phone's in that bedroom. You go get him while, while, while I go down to the car and get my camera. I want to take some pictures of my own. Well, did you see that camera in the bookcase? Maybe you can save yourself a trip. No, there's no film in it. I looked. It was opened and searched like everything else. Late Mr. Treaty went in for photography, apparently. He had his kitchenette fixed up like a dark room. Yeah. A lot of equipment there. The searcher wrecked all of it. All right, call Logan while I go for my camera. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Casey. What? Didn't he tell us he wouldn't be at headquarters till midnight? Yeah, well, call him at his home. Oh, uh, he has a new phone number. What is it? I'll write it down for you. Uh, that's where's my pencil. <laughs> Take mine. Thanks. Oh, well, I'll be. Oh, you've broken the point. I know it. Well, I use this fountain pen, a treaty. You shouldn't touch anything. This pen isn't going to tell the cops who killed him, eh? Nice point. Writes easy. All right, here's Logan's number. Call him as soon as you finish with City Desk. Yeah, I will. Uh, Casey... Don't stick that pen in your pocket. Oh, I'll need it to make out my film sheets. Don't worry, I'm not stealing from dead guys. The pen will be put back later. <laughs> if you think of it, I'll go phone. Uh, Ann, Ann. Yeah? Give Logan the lowdown about that picture and about everything else. Except, don't tell him about the matchbook we just found. Why not? Well, cops have no appreciation of the newspaper racket. We'll lose our exclusive. We'll go out to the briar wall and follow it up by ourselves. <laughs> My cousin Jake isn't here, Casey. Huh? Expect him later, Luke? He's sure to be in sometime tonight. All right, we'll stick around. Maybe you can give us some information. Information? About the Tug Loftus thing. Jake and I have already told the cops and you newspaper people all we know about that. <laughs> hey, you know, the last time I was in this office, Lou, you and Big Jake were telling the cops that that safe there hadn't been robbed. It hadn't been. We still don't know where they got that crazy report. Anyway, the tipster told the cops that he heard Big Jake squawking about the loss of 50 grand. Their tipster lied. That safe's never had more than a couple of thousand in it. And that's a big take from a cafe business like ours. Yeah, from your cafe business. Lou, what would you know about a guy named Treaty? Treaty? Mm-hmm. Max Treaty. Why do you ask? We understand he's been a customer of yours. He was once a bartender here. A bartender? What did he tend bar here? Till about a year ago, Jake fired him. Jake, huh? After I'd caught Treaty holding out on the cash register. Huh? Jake only fired him for that? You know, Jake, the guy left here minus a few teeth. Uh, why are you curious about Treaty? He was murdered this afternoon. Murdered? Uh-huh. Was Treaty here the night Loftus was killed, Lou? Yeah, I think he was. Had he ever had any run-ins with Tug Loftus? Yes, about a month ago, Loftus slapped him around in the bar and Treaty said he'd get even. That was just talk, of course. He knew he didn't stand a chance against that tough pug. We have reason to believe he made his chance. That he killed Loftus. You have? Yeah. We got a photograph showing him doing it. Casey. It's all right. Can't be any secret about it, Annie. It'll be on page one of this morning's edition. That'll hit the streets in a couple of hours. Where did you get such a photograph, Casey? Oh, we just got it. You and Jake both use this desk, Lou? Yes. Somebody scribbled some figures on a scratch pad here. Is that your word? Why do you ask? Oh, just curiosity. Can't make out whether some of the figures are meant to be ones or sevens. Jake makes his ones that way. Yeah. Jake, huh? How about his sevens? There are no sevens among those figures. Show me how Jake writes his sevens, Lou. Why? Your nervousness about these figures makes me want to know. Here, take this pen and write. What? That pen? Yes, you recognize it. It's treaties. And this is a gun, Casey. Casey. I see, it's a gun, Lou. All right. 
A 32 snub nosed revolver. I'm not so sure how much you two know, but I think it's too much. You've reminded me of a bet I missed. What did you find in that pen, Casey? I didn't look for anything in the pen. Well, maybe I missed a bet. Look now. Pull the cap off and see if there's anything inside. Okay. Hey, there is some. What? I'd say it's a rolled up film, a negative. Take it out. Okay. Rolled up negative, all right. Never mind looking at it. Give it to me. Well, I want to look Give at it. Give it to me. You're the boss. Here. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to you for reaching for it. I'll take that gun of yours, Luke. No. Let it go or I'll break your arm. Let go. Thanks for the gun. Oh, Casey. All right, now I'll give the orders around here. Put your hands up, Lou. Keep them up and sit down. All right, all right. What's that negative, Casey? It's a nice, clear shot of Lou Solwyn here taking dough out of an open safe. The safe in this office. That safe. Right, Lou? You're doing the talking. You took the dough, Lou, on the date it was reported stolen. And somebody caught you doing it with a camera. From that window where a slat in the Venetian blind is missing. And that someone was Max Treaty. And Treaty moved into that expensive apartment soon after the robbery and didn't work anymore. Because Lou here was paying him to keep this evidence undercover. Big Jake is the boss of your bookmaking racket, Lou. He owns it, and you're just a hired man. The dough you stole was Jake's, and if he'd found out that you Okay, took Casey, it... you figured it. Get me out of here now. Take me to the cops where I'll be safe. Jake finds out he'll kill me. Yes, like you killed Treaty after your counter-blackmail scheme had backfired. Counter-blackmail scheme? Don't you get it, Annie? No. I get it. Uh, Jake! Casey. Drop that gun case or I'll blow you to pieces before you can turn around. Drop it! Guy's at a slight disadvantage when his back is turned, Jake. Okay. Thanks. You, uh... You're outside the door? Yeah, listen. Jake, I swear. I said I'd been listening, Lou. I didn't say anything. Casey did the talking. And he doped things out swell. You took that 50 grand, you dirty louse. 50 grand of my dough. No, Jake, no. I'm going to pay you off, Lou. Don't, don't shoot me. <laughs> he shot him. Sorry, I had to do it, miss. You've done a crazy thing, Jake. You go to the chair for this. I don't think so, Casey. Cops get here, they're gonna find you and this lady dead, too. You're go- you're Sorry, gonna... sister, but that's the way it's gotta be. You and Casey will be shot with Lou's gun. My gun will be found beside Casey. The cops have figured that Lou tried to make a getaway, that you shot it out. I'll call the cops myself, start them on that theory. It won't work, Jake. I'm betting it will. Betting's my business. Now, oh, just pick up Lou's I gun. I got it first, Jake! Now, Lou! <laughs> Lou wasn't dead. He, he shot him. Lou! Lou! He's passed out again. All right, I'll get their guns before either one pulls a second recovery. <sighs> now, Ann, pick up that phone and call the cops while I watch these guys. Right, right, Casey. So much I don't understand. Where does Treaty fit in now? Treaty didn't kill Loftus. Well, that, that picture proves he did. The evidence is there in black and white. Black and white aren't true colors, kid. Not true? No. And pictures themselves can lie. I don't get it. Hello? Uh, headquarters, uh, connect me with homicide, will you please? Uh, Casey, tell me, what do you mean? Well, I'll explain the whole works, Annie, after I take some pictures of Jake and Lou that'll be really on the level. We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. Here's some really good news for the millions of people in the United States who prefer their beer and ale in clean, sanitary glass as Americans have preferred it for more than a hundred years. You can now buy your favorite brand of beer and ale in a new kind of glass bottle, a lightweight, compact glass bottle that requires no deposit and that never has to be returned. Think of it. No more piling empties in the corner. No more carting them back to the store. No more complicated beer bottle bookkeeping. When you've finished your beer or ale, you simply discard the bottle as you would any other food container. And here's another thing. The new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottles are light in weight, easier to carry home, and they take up less room in your refrigerator, too. So next time you buy beer or ale, demand it in sparkling clean Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottles. Product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. There's a lot 
lot of things I don't understand, Casey. Well, all right, pal. We'll take it from the beginning. Lou Salwin did considerable talking before he died, Ethelbert. He's dead, huh? Yeah, both him and Jake. Tell me. Well, while Treaty was bartender at the Briar Wall, he found out that Lou Salwin was stealing from Jake, his boss. Yeah. And then Lou caught Treaty cheating the cash register and told Jake. Who'd knocked out some of Treaty's bridge work, which made Treaty very sore at Lou for snitching. So he laid for him with a camera and got that picture of Lou robbing the safe for a really big haul. Yeah. After that, Treaty sat pretty at Lou's expense. Lou got pretty desperate under the pressure, and finally he hit on a bright idea. He'd get Treaty in a worse spot than he was. By killing Loftus. Lou killed Loftus? Right, he did. In Lakeside Park, where Treaty was to meet Lou and collect more blackmail. Lou shot the pug and then hid himself with a camera and waited. When Treaty suddenly saw Loftus, where he expected to meet Lou, his first instinct would be to draw that gun. And Lou got a very interesting picture of him standing over the body with the gun. And Treaty didn't know about the picture, of course. It was taken by a black light, an infrared bulb. When he realized Loftus was dead, <laughs> he lost no time in getting away fast. Sure, Lou developed his picture and sent a print to Treaty, but his, uh, his sloppy way of writing sevens got the print into Mrs. McCluskey's hands. Why'd he send the picture to Treaty? What well, to shake him up, to make him sweat. Oh. Then Lou went to his apartment, expecting to find him in a big dither, <clears throat> ready to trade the original negative of that safe robbery for the negative that made Treaty seem a murderer. But... Treaty hadn't received the print, and Lou realized it might fall into the hands of the cops. But they arrested Treaty for a murder he hadn't committed. He'd tell everything he knew about Lou. Lou's big scheme had backfired. He had to, had to get the negative of the robbery picture Treaty held over him. Treaty wouldn't tell him where he'd hidden it, even under the beating that Lou gave him. Well, you know the rest. And he was a bartender, like me. <laughs> Miss Williams, I... I'm going to report that guy to our local and have him thrown right out of our union. He's dead, Ethelbert. Yes, sir. I... Hmm? Dead, pal. Oh. It's like my sister Edna says, Casey. Quote, If you get your picture took, you're liable to get framed. Unquote. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is written by Alonzo Dean Cole. It is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. is directed by John Dietz and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey created by George Harmon Cox. Original music is by Archie Blyer and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>